Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel and you know I love talking about investing. It's been my profession as an equity analyst and I love that idea of putting my money to work but, but the fact is that very few people are ever going to get rich just by investing. This is a survey by BNP Wealth Management of 2,500 millionaires and where they have their money. Now I love this survey and one of the most surprising facts is that most millionaires, they've got far more invested in their own business than in stocks. In fact, on average, most millionaires have more in bonds and cash than in the stock market. Nation, the rich aren't rich because they make that 8% on their money in stocks. The rich are that way because they've created those assets that are paying them double and triple digit returns on their money. They've started a business that creates wealth. But I understand that's a big step for a lot of people. The Small Business Administration reports that less than 60% of small businesses started make it past their third year in business. Now this graph shows the survival rates by number of years in business, and it's a pretty steep curve through those first five years. But there is a way to take that risk out of those small business statistics. By starting a business that costs less to launch, you can experiment with different ideas until you hit the one that gives you that seven-figure payday. So in this video, I'll give you a crash course on how much it costs to start a business. We'll look at real data from the SBA and all the costs to launch and run your business. Then I'll count you down to the top five business types and how much it costs to start on each. I'll start with the most expensive business to start, then count you down to reveal the easiest and cheapest business, one you can get started with no money at all. I'll leave a clickable link in the video description below if you want to jump straight to those business types. First though, I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now Nation, according to the SBA, entrepreneurs started businesses with an average of $10,000 in 2019, with a home-based business a little bit cheaper to start, between three to five grand. Now data out of the Kauffman Foundation puts the average quite a bit higher though, around $30,000 to start that traditional business type. And we'll look at those business types, but here remember there are going to be some big differences in those startup costs between what you'd call the traditional businesses with a physical location and then those online business ideas and those service focused businesses. Your startup costs are those one time expenses to get you up and ready to go. These are going to be things like office equipment, uh, supplies, licenses or permits, any market research you need to understand things like prices and the cost to put together your website. And here the Small Business Administration offers a free worksheet to help estimate your startup costs as well as those monthly expenses. I've downloaded the spreadsheet and I'll link to that in the video description below so you can download it free. The worksheet has columns for budgeting as well as those actual costs that come in. You can change the amount in each column and even change these rows of costs for specific ones to your business. And what I love about this worksheet though is that it's going to calculate the entire columns here, your budgeted numbers and the actual ones and then give you a grand total at the bottom. It's a great resource if you're just getting started so look for that link below. Ongoing monthly costs are really going to be the killer here and you should have an estimate for these before you start any business. Now the thing is, why so many business owners fail is because while it might only cost a few grand to get started, it might cost upwards of 10 grand a month to run the business. No matter how great your idea, your business isn't going to be earning its full potential right off the bat. It's going to, be take, it's going to take time to get up to speed, so, so it's a good idea to have up to six months worth of these ongoing expenses in the bank before you get started. These are going to be things that include like your, your rent or your office or sales space, uh, utilities, any software you need, an inventory, sales, and even marketing expenses. And just one more note here before we get to those five business ideas and the startup costs on each, but understand the difference between fixed and variable costs. Now fixed costs are going to be things that are ongoing costs that are set a set amount no matter how much you make. These are things like your rent, utilities, and your insurance. Then there are the variable costs and they're called this because the amount varies according to how your business grows. For example, sell more of a product and you'll need more of the materials that go into making that product. Your marketing costs are also something that rises and falls with this. And why this is so important though is because those fixed costs are the bare minimum that you're going to need to keep your business running. Uh, you'll want to budget for those variable costs as well, but not having enough to cover the fixed costs is going to break your business. Now I want to count down through those top five business types and how much it costs to start on each. I'll detail the pros and cons of each as well as how much they cost. And besides that lower cost to start up on the last three that we'll talk about, they can each be started right from home. 
The SBA reports that 50% of small businesses start as a home-based business, so anyone can do this. First on our list here is buying into a franchise. So we're talking any franchise business, from a boutique travel agency to opening a McDonald's. A franchise is when you buy the rights to use an existing business. The business owner helps you get started with, with training, marketing, and hiring. And in exchange, you pay a one-time franchise fee and an ongoing percentage of sales. The SBA reports that about 3% of all businesses are franchises, including some of the most popular chains like McDonald's, Subways, and Domino's. These things can be super expensive to start though with that one-time franchise fee ranging from a couple of grand to 20 or $30,000 for some of those popular brands. Now you'll also pay that percentage of monthly sales to the franchise. So for example, you know, McDonald's Corporation takes 4% of your sales off the top each and every single month. For most franchises, you'll have that minimum liquidity and net worth requirements as well. These big brands want to make sure that you have the money set aside to make the business work and you're not going to let their good name suffer from a bad franchisee. All told, it's usually going to cost at least thirty dollars to $50,000 to start most franchises, including store lease, inventory, uh, fees, and training. Pros here are that you get everything you need to get started and then support from corporate in running that business. Most of these have some kind of training program and they legitimately want you to succeed. Cons though are those high startup and the ongoing costs. And besides just the regular cost to run a business, you've got that monthly percentage that you've got to kick back to the franchise. And some of these can even expect you to buy their supplies, which is always at a higher cost than wholesale. Now, I've always been skeptical of the franchise model because it's just so easy to go that DIY approach. Even if you're hesitant to start from scratch, do your research and just learn how the business is run without having to pay that fee or those ongoing expenses. Next here is opening a traditional retail store, and I'm including this one just as a way to compare it against some of the newer ideas that we'll look at next. So here I'm talking about a traditional brick and mortar store where whether you're selling clothes or donuts, you've got a physical location either in a mall or a standalone store. Now, startup costs are going to vary for these, but Forbes puts the average anywhere from twenty to fifty thousand dollars for these types of businesses. And one of your biggest expenses is going to be that commercial space, which can run from three to five dollars per square foot each and every month. And remember, you're going to need space that you see as a customer and that backroom space to store your inventory and your supplies. So you'll also need to pay staff because you'll want that store open from at least 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. You might be able to take care of the bookkeeping yourself at your house, but you'll need at least two full-time employees for that store, which, which is going to cost at least four grand a month. And here you've still got your inventory costs and all those other fixed costs that go into this type of business. All told, including a budget for that first couple of months, that twenty or thirty thousand dollar estimate is probably an absolute minimum that you should start with a traditional retail business. Third on our list, an Amazon FBA business, and I love this as an alternative to that traditional retail business. Now, fulfilled by Amazon or FBA is the twenty-first century way to create your own retail brand. You contact with manufacturers through a site like Alibaba to design your product package it with your logo and then the manufacturer is then going to ship it directly to Amazon's warehouses. You have your Amazon page and the product is shipped directly to your customers. So for these you don't have those traditional retail store costs. Uh, you don't have to hire a bunch of staff and for a per unit fee based on the product size Amazon is going to store and then ship out all of your sales. Now, I've seen people start an Amazon FBA business for as little as a couple of grand. Your startup costs are, are enough for an initial inventory, so ordering that first bulk shipment from your manufacturer. Uh, you'll also want your own website to draw visitors from Google and the social media before redirecting them to your Amazon page, but that costs less than three dollars a month. You might spend a few hundred dollars in Amazon marketing ads just to launch your product, but get your website traffic going and the organic sales you get can be enough to, to keep your products ranked and getting sales from those Amazon visitors. Now, pros of an Amazon FBA business is that much of this system is already set up for you. Alibaba lists thousands of manufacturers for hundreds of thousands of products. You can get something custom made, have it shipped with your logo and your packaging and sent directly to Amazon's warehouses. You've got a sales page on the world's largest e-commerce site and it takes care of all the logistics. The downside to this compared to that traditional retail business is, is maybe your product page isn't as visible as that big store on Main Street. You have to get those first sales to your page before Amazon is going to start ranking it and then sending you that traffic from their page. Most of the startup costs here for Amazon FBA are going to be from your time, you know, developing the idea and managing your website. 
you'll get a good idea of how fast your inventory sells and it won't take long to place a new order every month or so with a manufacturer. One of the best things you can do here is build up that traffic to your website to send visitors to your Amazon page. I've seen people spend thousands of dollars in Amazon ads each month when they could get that same effect for free if they just start a blog for that traffic. So I'll link to a free five video build a blog series in the video description below. So if you're thinking about starting an Amazon FBA business, definitely check that out. Next here is creating an e-commerce site. And here we're getting through those business ideas with the lowest startup costs. This is gonna work with either your own products model. So using it with a, like an Amazon FBA page or as an affiliate model for no cost at all. So an affiliate website is just gonna be a blog that you update at least once a week, basically just posting articles related to a topic. Within each of these articles, you mention products or books that go further to solve that problem. So maybe you list out five ways to get in shape and throughout the list, you mention exercise equipment or courses. Now what you can do, you can sign up to be an affiliate for these products or courses, either directly with the business or as an affiliate uh, with an affiliate network like CJ Affiliates or ShareASell. And when you sign up to promote these products, you'll get a special link that you use in those posts. If someone clicks on the link and makes a purchase, you get a commission. Advantages of this kind of business model are that you don't have to take the time to create your own products or courses. You're promoting someone else's products, so you can just take that time and look for the best ones out there. You don't have any of those product-related costs either, and you can have everything up and running in an afternoon. Best of all, besides maybe $3 a month to host your website, there are absolutely no costs here except your time. Downsides here, though, is that the profits are going to be lower until you get your website traffic up to speed. You can make between $25 to $150 for each sale on a lot of these affiliates, but you'll need the blog visitors to do that. That means time spent writing posts and getting traffic from social or search. Number one here for the business idea with the lowest startup costs is becoming an online influencer. It costs nothing to start a social media account or a channel here on YouTube. Now, yeah, you, you can spend thousands on a fancy camera, but take a look at the first videos on most channels. Most people start with nothing more than a basic smartphone. Now I've made just over $100,000 in the last 23 months and have averaged over $7,700 a month this year. And that's just on the ads YouTube shows before the videos, not including sponsorships or affiliate sales. I've got a couple of videos on starting a YouTube channel as well as a free webinar for, for growing your channel and making as much money as possible. So I'll link to those in the video description, but this is really one of those best business ideas out there. Pros of starting your YouTube or social media business are that it costs absolutely nothing to start. You don't even need a website, though it's a good idea here. You'll build a community around your videos and you'll start making money automatically once you reach those thousand subscribers. Cons are that there is a lot of competition right now on social media, so you'll need to narrow your topic. You can't just talk about everything under the sun, so choose something you can be an expert in. Click on the video to the right for a free five video series on starting and making money with a website. I'll share how to get started and how I built a six-figure income with my blogs. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.